video 0503, formulas, trying it out. So we've created a really basic formula. Now what I want to do is extend this into not only controlling the visibility of objects, but also controlling the numbers of objects in an array and using some mathematical formulas to control them. From your chapter five folder, open the file chapter five ladder formulas start. And from the create tab, click on family types. In this family, I've already placed some rungs to my ladder. As you can see, they're placed outside of my reference planes. I've got a single rung and an array of two rungs. We can align these into the correct location once we're satisfied that our formulas will work. There's two reasons for having two lots of rungs. When creating an array, you cannot have less than two in an array. But if the length of the family determines that there's only one rung to be created, that could potentially cause an error. So what I plan to do here is to create two visibility parameters. Here we've got a single rung and a multi-rung visibility parameter. If I select one of them, we can see that this is a yes, no parameter, and this can control the visibility of an object. For the multi-rung parameter, I want this to equal the array num parameter down here, but I don't want it to just be equal to it. I want it to be greater than one. To save me typing, I can select the text of the parameter name, control C, and the keyboard control V to paste the parameter in. It saves on spelling mistakes. So for the multi-rung visibility, I want this to be greater than one. Click on apply, and we'll see that the multi-rung visibility has changed to be off. For the single run, I want this to be less than two. So in this instance, I'm going to select the text again, control C and control V, and this time I'll be less than two. So what we can do now is click on OK and select the single rung. Let's look at the properties. The single rung has a visibility property to it. We can select this, and because it's a single rung, we can add the single rung parameter to it and click on OK. We'll do the same to the multi rung, only I can't. Let's see what we have to do to this. I have to select the array group, edit the group, and then apply that visibility to the object within the group. If I select the visibility here to the multi rung, click on OK, and then finish, what we'll find is that when I select the other model group, click on edit group, and select the object, this will have the same visibility parameter associated with it. Click on OK, and then finish. So let's take this a step further. Go back to family types, and we now want to control the array number. Now this array number is going to be affected by the length. I've worked this out ahead of time. So the array number equals the length minus the first rung multiplied by two, because there's two of them, minus the end extension divided by the rung spacing. Let's see what happens when we hit enter. The right parenthesis is not expected. Let's see what I've done wrong. My brackets don't equal out. So down here, I need to add a left bracket. The brackets now enclose the entire front portion of my formula. Let's see what happens when I change some of the values. Let's try changing the length. Change it to a thousand and press enter. I'll now get three in the array number. Change it to 500 and apply, and we'll get one. You can see that the length of the family has now come down to 500. Nothing's happening with the array up here though at the moment. Remembering that a Revit array cannot have less than two objects, we still have two objects here. So how can I control an array but maintain two in the number? Let's just put this length back to two meters and click on apply. 
I have another parameter here, array number. And so what I can do is have a conditional statement that says if array number or array num is less than two, then the answer should be two. If not, it's then going to be array num. Let's see what happens with that if my spelling's correct. So at the moment, the array number equals array num. Let's crank down this value again to 500 and click on apply. Because the array num is less than two, the answer is two. So we can now assign this array number parameter to my actual array. Selecting one of the groups in the array, we can now select the actual array and assign the array number parameter. Now, if we go back to family types and change the length and click on OK, we should see that our family changes accordingly. We can test this in a blank project. From your application button, click on New Project. It doesn't matter about which template you use. Switch windows back to the family and load into project. I'm going to place this on a work plane and create an instance. Let's have a look at that in more detail. We can see the rungs of the ladder. If I stretch the end, we can now see that we have a single rung dragging the family longer. The single one disappears and we now have multiple rungs, which is how we intended the family to work. All we need to do now is edit the family and move the rungs into the correct location.